Welcome back to Age of Mythology. This is extended edition, which uh, doesn't mean anything good, as you guys know. But anyways, we're just going to watch a replay of a pre-siege all-in hold as Atlantis. So this is kind of another Atlantis guide, uh, almost like that set set thing I did. Uh, this is versus Isis, though. Isis goes the, the fast, heroic, pre-siege all-in. This is the most viable Isis strategy versus Atlantis. I mean, it's, it's the most easy way to deal a lot of damage, and it's probably the hardest tactic for Atlanteans to counter. <clears throat> wow, I don't like how this, this uh, resources thing is taking up so much space here. I wish it would be like, I don't know, somewhere else. Because when I turn on the chat, uh, we can't see the chat of when people advance or anything. So yeah, extended edition problems. I'm just going to turn this off, as always. Turn it back on when, uh, when I need to. So yeah, Isis versus Oranos on Marsh. So the metagame, uh, as this man is going pre-siege all in, he's just going to go fast heroic around 7 minutes, and then spam priests from about 2 temples, spam siege from about 2 siege workshops. That's the meta. And me, as the Atlantean player, have to take a second town center and go semi-fast heroic to defend it ideally. I could go classical, but it's it's a, a lot harder to defend a priestly jawline without being heroic, because the Arcus really do help a lot for sniping priests. If I were defending classical with massive Marmelo, all he needs to do is just add Axeman to the mix, and it's game over. So let's just speed up straight to the action. How to defend versus a priest siege all in. I'm just going to go classical, because I think that's that's really when the tutorial begins, from the classical age. Okay, so here's the first pointer. I already create a wall with my starting buildings. I'm not placing my temple out here. Uh, you know, economic guild is always right here, but... Because I'm playing versus an Isis, I specifically put my temple here, instead of in front. Some players would, you know, normally put a temple in front, make a mini wall here, a little wall here, but... It's a lot more effective to just wall off your town center as much as you can than to, you know, place further out walls. So that's the first key thing here for Sir Priest Siege All In. It's not a bad relic there. For raiding, it's pretty good. If, if you're raiding with chariots, you get six more line of sight. Definitely pretty strong there. So town center is already going down. And he clicked up to Bast. Got a Promethean out. One of the things that I often don't do is delete my Promethean. Uh, it helps a lot to delete your Promethean for higher speed and rating. But, I don't know. Sometimes I just don't do it, so whatever. Okay, second town center is just about complete. So the standard thing versus uh, any Egyptian player, really, is to take two town centers and then produce Terma from one or two counter barracks. So that's exactly what I'm doing. I need some Terma to hold off against the initial... Uh, Sphinx Harassment, then I can Valor my Terma and just hold off against it easily. Sphinx Harassment against Atlantis is very effective. I've been playing uh, raw Sphinx Rushes a lot lately. Basically rushing Atlanteans with three Sphinx and casting Eclipse, and it's super effective. I can often kill many citizens early in the game. So clearly, I'm just trying not to lose a single villager here. And that's always the goal. Not to lose a single villager! Whoo! Okay, okay. Oh, wow. Man, I just realized I, I yelled. Uh, some people have been complaining about me yelling into the microphone, so I, I'm trying to turn it down in the video editor, because it really does pick it up very loudly when I yell. Um, so, you know, I'll try not to yell that much, and if I do, I mean, I'll just, I'll just edit it out. Anywho, he has clicked up to the heroic before the 8-minute mark, and I'm just playing with the Terma, about to start raiding. So as soon as he's up heroic, he can uh, deal a lot of damage. Really nothing special going on just yet. That's what I'm kind of waiting. So he's placing down a second temple right now for mass, mass priest. Getting the cheaper priest upgrade, which is absolutely necessary. And focusing a lot on wood. Once again, absolutely necessary. So he's pretty, playing pretty, pretty standard, pretty well. One siege workshop going down. It's actually very tough to produce from two siege workshops. 15 vils 
or anywhere from 10 or more villas is good for one single production, but you need like 20 villagers to produce constantly from double siege workshop. So this is a bit of a nuisance. He can't really deal with my, my terma and oh, can I snipe it? 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 Oh boy. Whoo! Wow, okay, so I sniped that scorpion, man. That was a good snipe. Uh, getting the pharaoh is very nice too, just because he's not getting that bonus economy. Oh wow, he's got that right-click garrison enabled. <laughs> you can always tell from the record games. It's pretty funny. Alright, let me just speed it up a little bit more. Or actually, let me go into the, the, the this perspective. So I'm on two town centers, getting that boom going on. And he is on one, just now getting the siege workshop out. Building it pretty slowly. You know, if he had his pharaoh, he could build it faster. But fact of the matter is, he's just spamming up a lot of priests right now. Um, adding a scorpion man is pretty effective. Scorpion men are very powerful units. And it's very effective if I don't have the heroes to counter it. But of course, he's adding the scorpion man because once he casts Ancestor's Eclipse, he will have another myth unit that will take the bonus. <clears throat> so just adding in a second siege workshop pretty soon here. One villager. It's, uh, you know, you should ideally use a lot more than one villager because it takes 91 seconds. So a minute and a half to build a siege workshop. So, you know, that's, that's a lot of time, especially for an all-in strategy like this one. You really should be pushing a little bit sooner than this. But that's okay. So I just reached my semi-fast heroic. Uh, his priests are dealing good damage versus my Terma, to be honest. I really gotta keep all my heroes alive. And that's the key here, not to lose any units. I know what's coming. As soon as I see the priests, I'm fully uh, fully aware that he's going a priest siege all-in strategy. So as you guys can see, these buildings are walling off my town center as much as possible. Uh, ideally, I should add a second layer of buildings here. But I just haven't gotten to that stage of the game yet. I don't have enough economy, as you guys can see. I barely got eco. I got some for more buildings. But the first... Siege Tower is coming in. Uh, Kintarius is a good choice. You know, they might have a bit more Pierce Armor than, than Mermillo. It's not bad. Uh, so I also walled off my second Town Center just in case he decides to push against that one instead of the first one. Any moment now, Ancestors and Eclipse are going to be thrown down. And the tough thing here is to kill the Siege Towers. Uh, so ideally, I should pull a few more Villagers from the back into the front here and micro ungarrisoning my citizens all the time against the siege towers. So what I'm just waiting on is to have a good micro environment because I don't have space to micro with the matter here. There's the Ancestors Eclipse, very nice cast. So as soon as the building here goes down, I can micro from my town center out. Uh, right now I'm focusing the Contarius on the siege tower, but he's got so much army, I'm going to lose all of my units here, unfortunately. Uh, I'm not sure if this is a mistake of having the army here, but this is the crucial moment that most Atlantean players fall down versus the priest siege all in. So what do you do? You need the wall. That buys you time. You absolutely need to micro your citizens back into your town center ungarrison when necessary. Uh, ideally, you should not have you should not lose your entire army like I did. Uh, you should keep some hero units alive. Heroes are the crucial thing here because he's got two scorpion men to deal with my citizens ungarrisoning. So just about now, I'm going to lose the production buildings. Now I can ungarrison and hopefully save some citizens. I did lose one there. That's a bit of a problem. And he does have tier 1 upgrades on his priests. So he's he's really nailed down the strategy. The other important thing could be adding masons or fortified town centers. So that's exactly what I'm trying to do. You know, just add more hit points to my town centers as much as possible. And obviously, he will try to focus my villagers down as much as he can. Now, I still have a shockwave in storage, but basically just in garrisoning at the right time is good enough to, uh... Oh! I tried to alt-right-click into my town center there, but it right-clicked instead, so I lost another citizen. That sucks. But yeah, I killed off quite a few siege towers, one more to go, then I can immediately hop back into my town center. And there it is. So these priests are not going to deal any real damage without the siege towers. This is a key thing here. You have to ungarrison and snipe every siege tower. As soon as the citizen's taking heavy damage, as soon as you can tell it's being focused down, garrison it right back inside a town center. So this is all about town center micro when it comes to the priest siege all in hold. And now he's losing a few priests just because he's uh, pushed too far forward. But now he's going to reconstruct and make a forward aggressive base here. 
Now, ideally, you want to have a palace, and you need to be producing destroyers against this push. Because destroyers, he needs to throw an axeman to deal with it. That's a whole nother ball game, you know. Just, just a bit more difficult to deal with. So, for now, I held off the first wave, which is the most difficult. The Ancestors Eclipse All-In is the point where most Atlantean players, the intermediate players, would die against good pre-siege All-In. So this is, this is definitely the turning point uh, onto the second wave of units. Now he's got barracks units coming in, which is going to counter my Contarius. So this is a bit of a problem for me. Uh, I do have a bit of upgrades, Pierce Armor upgrades, which is absolutely necessary. And this is a good engagement for me. Contarius are taking down Priests. And I'm ungarrisoning my villagers whenever I need to to take down siege towers. Even the Contarius at this point could take down siege towers. But the Scorpion Man, this is what I was talking about. One Scorpion Man can deal with the entire army here. I need heroes to deal with just that alone. Or the bird, but the bird's going to get sniped. Okay, nice uh, shockwave on the siege towers. At this point, I can go in, and here it is. Another villager micro session. Uh, I definitely need masons upgraded from one of my town centers. Just because I'm getting low health on this town center, ideally, I cannot lose. I should not lose this town center with the proper micro. It is very low on health now. In fact, three siege towers might be enough to take it down. Ooh, yeah, still three siege towers. That is too hard to micro against, and there it is. He took down the main town center. This is the second crucial point of the game where I am on the verge of defeat, so to speak. Or at least most players will be on the verge of defeat. Uh, but just keeping up with my production, my military production, that's the most important thing here. So aside from Villager Micro, the second most important thing against a pre-siege all-in is once you lose your production buildings, your military production, most players would, uh, you know be defeated on the spot there because you cannot produce enough military to hold this off but that's the key here always got to throw in more military buildings in order to keep up with the military production so that's what i that's what i did there i got four buildings right now uh the mermelo are going to be super useful to hold them off just because he's already countering my cavalry with the medium spearman but once i get my mermelo to medium it's going to be enough to hold off his army until he throws an axeman so, he did try to take my town center there, but it's a little too early for that. So, he's just throwing in more barracks units, taking more coverage, more ground. <clears throat> Excuse me, more ground to try to push me off. So, now he's got no army to support his, his uh, siege here. Definitely got to fall back. And once again, I just need more military production. So, the best thing to do here with Mass Arcus is to micro them onto the priests. And then you're able to throw in Dryads. And the opponent cannot counter the myth units. So that's kind of what I'm trying to do here. Uh, the dryads are going to be very, very helpful in this army. I just need to snipe his priests. So I held off the second wave. And now I can try to re reclaim my town center. The scorpion man is a problem, but the bird is going to be able to take care of that if he doesn't micro away. And it looks like we got just that to happen there. So at this point, for him... He's already committed to the all-in. He's already been defended twice. Uh, he really should be focusing on heavy economy right now, which he's doing a good job on. He's upgraded his eco pretty well. If I were him, I might even go for a third town center. I mean, he is a bit broke on the resources right now, so never mind. He's doing good. He's doing good. So here comes possibly the third wave. I'm in a bit of trouble here because I don't have Mermillo. And all this siege is going to deal a lot of damage. I need infantry. I need those medium mermillo to defend against this. So I can't get my town center up with the siege here. But all these citizens can snipe a lot of siege. And that costs so much economy for him. So he decides to pull back before taking heavy losses. Now his priest count has dwindled down too, too low. In fact, at this point, uh, I would transition out of the priests into Midgall units. Midgall and barracks. He could go all in barracks. It doesn't matter. But the, the, the priests... You know, you don't need to produce that much of them anymore. Because, yeah, once the priests die from the first few waves, you got to transition out of it. So that's kind of the point we hit, hit right now. And his army is too small to defend against the siege towers. He has no defense against the siege towers and may lose every single one of them. He did snipe a palace, which is very useful. But if he loses six siege towers... Or seven siege towers just to snipe one palace. That's a major, major problem. And that's exactly what's happening right now. He's lost 
five, six. Six Siege Towers so far, and the seventh one falls. Seven Siege Towers, each one costing 200 wood, 100 gold. Incredible losses. Incredible. In fact, let's go to the Unit Losses tab here. So he's lost 5,000 plus wood, 6,000 plus gold. And we're even on the food loss. I'm just a bit more on that. So he's definitely lost way more economy than me. Oh, I almost fell off my chair. So even though he had two town centers versus my one town center for a little while there, he's lost so much economy and military, it's crazy. So at this point, holding off against the Priest Siege all in, uh, I have a big enough army to prevent him from any further from any further pressuring. So he can't get this mid goal up, he can't build around my base, because I've just got so much to hold off against it. So as I was saying earlier, his all-in has failed. At this point, he needs to commit to economy. Uh, and he's completely broke in economy right now. So that is a problem, for sure. Uh, completely broken economy. Pretty much maxed out villagers. So we're in the same same part of the game there. Just getting to the mid-game. Or this, this has been the mid-game for a while. Hopefully, going to transition to the late game. Yeah, so... Clearly, the most important thing once you hold off a pre-siege all-ins siege push is to max out your military all the time. That's why I have five military production buildings, six now, and could even add on more. Always got to ensure you can produce enough military to, you know, to reproduce it right away. Have a lot of hot chicks in your camp all the time so you can reproduce quickly. That's the key thing for Atlantis. That's why Atlantis was so successful, actually. This is a this is an unpopular fact. So anyways, he's still committing to the pre-siege all-in, and this is a problem I was talking about earlier. He, he should be transitioning out of the priest now because I've got so many upgrades on my units, I can easily snipe his priests, easily deal with it, and he's just not doing enough damage with it anymore. So pre-siege all-in is good for the early game. But for the mid game, you don't need priests. Uh, aside from the mid goal, I would actually go for. Well, he is going for slingers. I was going to say, I'd go for slingers. He could snipe my Arcus with all the slingers. Spearman slingers, that's all he needs. Two types of units. But I keep switching between Mermillo and. and. Uh, Katerius. So, you know, even adding Axeman Spearman slinger is a good choice. And he is kind of doing that, just adding priests on the side. Uh, so he's able to hold off that fight for a little bit longer. What's going to happen next? So I'm going Mythic, probably at this point. Yeah, I'm almost up Hecate, which is going to be a bit of a problem for him. And he really needs that market with caravans producing. Uh, he committed so heavy into this all-in, he can't even afford caravans right now at this point. As a matter of fact, just looking at his economy, 17 on food. His eco is not balanced well. He still has economy committed for priests and siege only. He should take 10 villagers off of uh, gold to put it on food. You know, he's got to just rebalance his eco to not commit to this many priests. Elephants are a good choice. He just needs a few more on food. So this is a good addition uh, to the mixture here, actually. Now, Mythic's a big problem. My Lampates can snipe each elephant just with the special there. So, I mean, yeah, I don't know what to what to suggest against that. But I still have the Hecate God Power, the Tartarian Gate. I can cast that anywhere on him. And that's a big, big problem. So, elephants are sniped. Lampate's probably going to convert the second one. There we go. And now I'm in full boom mode. Definitely rolling, uh, I'm snowballing out of uh, out of control here because my economy is pretty much maxed out. So I'm just going to spam upgrades with a maxed out army. That's usually what happens here. He could secure not just a third town center, but a fourth town center against me. But at this point, it might be too late. It might be too late. I think he should have gotten a third and fourth town center earlier instead of committing to the push. So there it is. That's pretty much all the basics of how to hold off against a pre-siege all-in. Uh, it just requires a lot of micro with with the villager on garrisoning. That's the biggest thing. And aside from the micro, the second biggest reason, as I said, that I have always lost against a priestly jolt is not enough military production. Once, it, once the Egyptian player destroys like 
two barracks. You need to have another, not just two barracks, but another like three or four to back it up. So yeah, here we go. Now it's just an even fight, but notice that he had to commit to mercenaries without any caravans. No caravan, mercenary production is always a problem. It's a panic move, and he's committing too much economy to just hold off against my push there, because he doesn't have the right army composition. Wow, there goes my voice. So we just keep fighting here. Didn't even have to use the Tartarian Gate at this point. Uh, we're just evenly trading units. And, yeah. Honestly, at this point for me... Oh, I already used the Tartarian Gate. What am I saying? Wow. I wasn't paying attention. So I used the gate in the back here. Just so he'd be distracted. And he cannot commit to destroying that Tartarian Gate in the back. He's going to lose his main town center. And now he has no chance of having caravan production. If anything, he could trade in the middle of the map from the corner here. But it's so dangerous. As soon as I move in with a few catapults or whatever, onagers, you know, he'd be in deep, deep trouble. His major gold mining camp is down right about now. So even though he's still pressuring me a little bit, I'm not able to push him too much. I'm still able to raid. I'm still able to deal damage with the Tartarian Gate. And the superior economy has already given me the advantage to really snowball out of control and win this game. Mercenary is doing a few nice shots there, destroying uh, onagers. That's a good good bet for the dollar there. Good, uh, good price. Good damage for the dollar. So he's down about 10 villagers from the max now. Uh, losing a few more here. Definitely needs to start reproducing villagers. And yeah, at this point, honestly, it's going to be GG. Because once he loses his main base, like right about now... It's so hard to just recover. He's only got two town centers up here with his economy dwindling down by the minute. And that's that's about it. That's about it. He was asking at the end of this match what his mistake was. This is this is a match from a while ago, so we already talked about it, but his mistake was not transitioning out of the pure pure priest, as I mentioned. That was the only big mistake. Everything else was played uh, textbook script. Perfect. So there we go. This is honestly game over at this point. Uh, my economy is just out of control. He, He's kind of screwed in, in his main base. So no matter how long he holds me off here, no matter how long he commits to a push here, it's a bit too late for that. As Ajax says, it's a little late for that. <laughs> that was a terrible Ajax voice. It's a little late for that, you know. Even if he's killing my units... This is so late game that I'm going into Kateri's Heroes, which can just snipe buildings on the fly. That's how, like, you know, that's how much economy I have, I should say. So this is definitely the late game. The thing is, I don't have enough population to support a real army. So I can just make a few Kateri's Heroes, uh, Kateri's, and turn them into Heroes. And that's going to cheat the population system. And then I can just deal a lot of damage with only a few units. So that's what I'm doing, just taking down his gold mine once again. Uh, Midgall down. He did take my palace down, dealing some decent damage, but just these Kateri's hero can deal with his Scarab, or a Scorpion Man, what am I saying? And essentially, I can just hold this off with Kateri's heroes at this point. For the average viewer, you know, this looks like he's still doing very good. He's still pressuring very well, but this is his last leg right here. He's, he's really got nothing remaining. He's lost too many units, that's a thing. Too many siege towers just went down for no good reason. And the palace, I just keep rebuilding it. Who cares? You know, I got enough economy for that. So at this point, I've pushed him off of gold. He's still got more gold mines around the around the map with the map control. But now he's the one that's under pressure. This is pretty much the first time in the game where the tides have turned. I'm the one that's going to start pressuring him consistently now. And yeah, that's about it. I upgraded a container there that was super low on health. <laughs> kind of a waste of gold. But whatever. Just these seven containers hero should be able to take down this fortified town center uh, with all these upgrades. But the health, never mind. The health is so low on a lot of these. They're going to die pretty quick. But that's alright. That's alright. More siege coming in. More siege towers falling down. And there goes the economy down the drain down the toilet so that's good game I'm just gonna speed it up until the end here
Definitely lost way too many units at this point, so. Fanatics, incredible, incredible unit. He lost uh, pretty much twice as much as I did in wood and in gold. So that's a good game. I don't want to bash the player. He is a friend of mine, so. Uh, that's pretty much how you hold off a Priest Siege all-in. And when you're playing Isis versus Atlantis, I always recommend a Priest Siege all-in. It's one of the strongest, strongest offensive all-in strategies you can pull off. So that's all I have for this video. Let's just check the post game, just for the sake of it. I had very high economy, and that's why, you know, that's why I was able to come back. That's always the strong point with Atlantis in this tactic. You start off with that two town center boom. If you only have one town center versus a priest siege all in, it's very tough to produce enough military. You need the two town centers. You need to have that economic upper hand so that when the enemy commits an all in, you have some upper hand. If you just have one town center with a lot of army, you really don't have much of an upper hand. But in this, in this meta game, you surely do. So I'm out of here, guys. It was nice talking to myself. Um, you know, as always. And I'll catch you guys next time.